I ran a massive amount of creator focused benchmarks on the Gigabyte Aero 15XC, and I'm gonna try and get these to you in under five minutes. Starting out, the color accuracy of this laptop is fantastic. It comes with 100% sRGB, 100% DCI-P3, and 95% Adobe RGB, all at a Delta E of less than two at 1.98. This is a 4K screen and reaches 390 nits at full brightness. Now, regarding the battery life, it has a 99 watt hour battery, and for streaming video, let's say like on YouTube, you can get about four hours and 55 minutes at half brightness. If you're doing some productivity tasks like doing Zoom calls, writing up some emails and web browsing, you're gonna get about four hours and 23 minutes. Now, in order to test Photoshop, I took the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark and ran it on repeat, and the battery lasted about two hours and 18 minutes. In order to do 4K playback in Premiere Pro on your battery, Running that on loop, you're gonna get about an hour and 34 minutes. So this battery isn't fantastic. You're definitely gonna to wanna to bring the charger with you if you're an on-the-go creator. Now, diving into the benchmarks, you can see that Cinebench R20, you hit about the middle of the charts. Cinebench R23, same thing. So on the simulated benchmarks, this laptop doesn't show off very much. In fact, it seems rather average. But as we get into the real-world benchmarks, which is what I care about most, it's where we really start to see this laptop pick up and impress. In Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, it tops the charts above any laptop I've ever reviewed on my channel. Now in SolidWorks, it did hit the middle of the charts rather low because it doesn't have a Quadro GPU. If you're using SolidWorks, and a CAD software, I definitely recommend getting a Quadro GPU inside of something like the HP Power G7 or the Asus StudioBook Pro 17. Now regarding After Effects, this laptop got second place right behind the Asus Zephyrus G14 for the main After Effects benchmark. In the render benchmark, it topped the Asus Zephyrus G14 by over 100 points. So if you're rendering, that RTX 3070 is a fantastic GPU. During 4K export time and 1080p export out of Premiere Pro, it got the best benchmarks I've ever seen on my channel at 230 for 4K and 46 seconds for 1080p with that nine minute clip. Out of DaVinci Resolve, it fared fairly well. I do use the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so it does not capitalize as much on the GPU, using roughly 24 to 34% of the GPU. If you use the paid version of Resolve, I definitely recommend this laptop as it will pull into that GPU and complement this export time much better. Regarding the 4K full quality playback, you can see that Gigabyte XC drops zero drop frames as I have it configured. And speaking of the configuration, this laptop does come with the Intel Core i7-10870H, the RTX 3070, 32 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Now, looking at the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, you can see that with 32 gigs of RAM, this laptop absolutely tops the charts of anything I've reviewed on my channel, scoring an 890. So this is a beast Photoshop laptop. Now, as you can see, if you set up different fan modes, these are the tests with Photoshop at quiet mode, normal mode, gaming mode, and deep control mode. But if you put it on normal mode, you won't see over 47 decibels and you'll, and you'll actually get the best Photoshop performance out of this laptop. Now, considering how much RAM you should get for this laptop, you definitely hit the sweet spot at 32 gigs of RAM. I upgraded this laptop to 64 gigs of RAM recently and found that I actually dropped points in Photoshop when I put in more RAM. So this laptop with 32 gigs of RAM running on normal fan mode will be the best performance you can get inside of Photoshop. This laptop not only has great performance, but also runs cool and quiet. On average, it had about a 73 degree Celsius during the 4K export. And during the 4K export on quiet mode, the fans only run at 35 decibels. On normal mode, 42 decibels. And on gaming mode, 46 decibels. Very respectable compared to something like the HP Omen that last year's model ran at 61 decibels of fan noise. Links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next episode.